Seven years of research and experimentation have developed unique new discoveries in the field of nuclear plasma reactions. The Sapphire project has found the key to generating medium temperature plasmas. Sapphire can create, control, contain, sustain, and repeat a wide variety of plasma regimes. The plasma self-organizes and develops its own electromagnetic containment field. Based on these discoveries, the Sapphire Project has established Orion Energy Limited to develop commercial technologies for major worldwide markets. Sapphire is a clean plasma reactor, which can generate energy, produce heat, transmute elements, and remediate radioactive waste. How does Sapphire work? We introduce hydrogen into the chamber. The anode is a metal alloy. The power going in is electrical. The reaction at the core generates heat. The heat creates steam to run a turbine to generate electricity. The hydrogen can be captured and reused. The output is electricity, the majority going to an external grid. Any surplus can be routed back to the power input. To date, after the reactions, all measurements and analysis show this to be a clean process, producing no negative radioactive side effects. In fact, note that nuclear radioactive materials are not required. Sapphire is mixing elements at the atomic level. What you are looking at is a patented design that uses atomic hydrogen in a self-organized plasma. The atomic hydrogen interacts with the other elements in the chamber, causing nuclear reactions that are transmuting elements from one to another. And these are the elements that Sapphire produced as a consequence of the nuclear reactions so far. What you are looking at here is an experiment run over several hours. We were adjusting the chemistry to get different results, the aim being to explore higher energy levels. On this day, the rise in temperature over time was what we were intending, and yet it still exceeded our expectations. Three separate analyses have been done by experts in computational fluid dynamics. All three predicted that with 100% input power, we would reach the thermal limit of the chamber. And for three years, these predictions had been accurate. But with our new adjustments and using only 7% input power, we very quickly reached the thermal limit. It was the elemental transmutations that were responsible for the rise in temperature over time that was almost 14 times what was predicted. The tokamak and ITER reactors draw many millions of watts of power in an attempt to contain collisional plasmas to obtain fusion. At a cost of billions of dollars, huge international projects have been trying to contain plasmas, utilizing vast arrays of superconducting magnets. So far, this has been unsuccessful. Fission reactors split the atom, and although they have an efficiency of around 35%, they also produce radioactive waste. This radioactive waste is being buried in the ground or stored in facilities at enormous expense. None of it is benign. Some of it is still deadly even after a half-life of over a million years. How is Sapphire different? Lenner, cold fusion, and all existing fission reactors are low or low-medium temperature nuclear reactors. They require specially prepared solid fuels which are expensive, 
and, in the case of fission reactors, often dangerously radioactive. Fission reactors are relatively safe, stable, but they produce radioactive spent fuel, which is extremely problematic and not safe. Fusion reactors are high temperature reactors. They also require some form of radioactive fuel, and so far, they are inherently unstable and not yet producing electricity. Sapphire is a medium temperature plasma reactor, currently producing a controllable stable plasma, which can be generated at will and run continuously over extended periods of time. Sapphire produces no environmentally dangerous or detrimental side effects. Self-organizing systems are a natural process occurring throughout nature. Sapphire forms its own electromagnetic containment field into a self-organizing plasma. It uses hydrogen, the most abundant element in the universe. Out of the 11 most abundant inorganic elements found in the interstellar medium, nine were also found in the sapphire reactor chamber after an experiment. They were not there before the experiment. Is there a way to get a higher resolution on these? Yeah, that's all I'm doing right now. Okay. And then we have carbon with barium, titanium, zinc, chromium. Once it was obvious transmutation was occurring, the Sapphire team began to discover other uses for the technology. And uh, lanthanum and cerium. Two of the transmuted elements found in the Sapphire chamber are lanthanum and cerium, both of which are considered rare earth elements. Okay, well, let's just map this out. Rare earth elements represent a vast global market. Mining them directly from the earth has a disastrous effect on the environment. Producing them in a clean lab would have enormous benefits. We, we asked him, if we put our probe close to the anode, what's going to happen to it? If you're in this range of densities and electron temperatures, then this is what's going to happen to your probe. This must have been for a certain distance away, maybe like a centimeter away or something yeah. like that, right? This is not just some sort of layered, linear plasma. These are rings. They're round rings. Studies done at MIT have shown that when radioactive waste is exposed to hydrogen isotope nuclei, the decay rate of the radioactive material can be accelerated, even to the point of neutralizing the radioactivity. Sapphire creates an environment where hydrogen nuclei interact with other elements, creating double-layer shells. Within these shells, electrons, ions, and molecules are trapped by powerful electromagnetic fields. It is in this environment where radioactive material would be exposed to the hydrogen nuclei to remediate the radioactivity of that material. Sapphire would also use radioactive materials as fuel, and the elemental transmutation would remediate the radioactive waste back into base elements and render it benign. Right now, there are 450 successful nuclear fission plants on the Earth. Imagine if they could produce energy without creating radioactive waste. And from that one, calculate the strength of the electric field. Sapphire is an international team. From a structural perspective, we've got the MEF. Working with consultants from Lockheed Martin, USDOD, Los Alamos, Lawrence Livermore Labs, Space Propulsion Consultants, the University of Toronto, Canadian Nuclear Laboratories, and more. Sapphire has created Orion Energy Limited to take the Sapphire technology to market. 
Orion Energy Limited has successfully completed an oversubscribed seed round of investment. From scientific experiment to commercial enterprise, what is happening in the Sapphire Lab now? Upgrades are made to the Sapphire Chamber. Gas vacuum, gas panel. Above minus one bar on the analog gate. Minus one bar. Check. Check. Refinements are made to the protocols, procedures, and instrument calibration. Check. Check. On panel vacuum control. This improves control and shortens the time between experiments. Sensing gas. The checklist for starting up Sapphire cycles through a hundred essential points. Check. Mass flow control is on. All the valves are closed. Running the Sapphire reactor is like flying a 747 jet airliner. Check. Check. Without autopilot. Okay, left side of the panel. The team now focuses on repeatability. Check. Check. Yeah, that's clearly a 670. That's most likely lithium. Or the 674 showed up last weekend also. If we get that nano really hot again, I can do the step and glue so it's just like, say, from 500 nanometers on up to 700. Because it'll collect the data a lot faster. Yeah, and we'll get more of an IR signature. Yes. Get some power into that with this new chemistry. Okay, let's bring it right down. Close. Just open the valve. Eight sixty. Right. Tell me what's yeah, up. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, one of those lines. There we go. Five twenty. Five twenty. There we go. Now we're getting some light. Now we're getting there. Are those the gold lines? Repeated testing yields results that accurately mirror previous experiments. The same type of tests yield the same type of results. The team can also stabilize and maintain plasma at higher energy levels than before. Can more accurately confirm thermal and energy limits of the reactor core temperature. If we look at the Sapphire Plasma Reactor as a commercial product, these are the key technologies involved. Once designed, Prototype 1 was built in eight weeks. Oh, there we go, point four. And up and running as predicted within minutes. Once designed, the 44,000 part Prototype 2 was built in 10 weeks and up and running as predicted within minutes. Fuel and reactor are new technologies. Here, Sapphire enters one of the most critical phases of development. Yeah, we're trying to maintain the symmetry of the plasma if you can. Yep. Maybe start getting asymmetrical. Refining the fuel and reactor to deliver optimized nuclear reactions to produce a viable commercial product. Everything learned to date will be applied to prototype number three, the development mule. Think of the Sapphire Reactor as a Formula One racing car, attaching an 800 horsepower high performance racing engine to a 1970s Volkswagen Beetle drivetrain designed for a 54 horsepower consumer engine. Not a good idea. The development mule prototype allows Sapphire to find the perfect marriage between engine and drivetrain to funnel optimum power to the wheels. In this case, the wheels being the generator and the production of electricity. It is also here that things can begin to accelerate. Unlike the fuel and reactor, the boiler, turbine and generator are well-established technologies 
Integrating them into the design and build of Prototype 3 is an engineering exercise with known parameters and principles. This is vacuum now. During this phase, a production team will determine the manufacturing processes required to deliver a competitive commercial reactor to market. Safar will then design and build prototype number four, an efficient and marketable commercial plasma reactor. It is here that variations of the design will be determined to address the requirements of the different potential markets. Orion Energy is focused on these key markets, clean energy, heating, production of rare earth elements, and remediation of nuclear waste. Each of these markets represents a trillion dollar industry over the next 10 years. Orion Energy is currently progressing in the lab while simultaneously engaging with investors to raise the necessary funds to bring this technology to market. <laughs>